Hey, welcome back to the channel, in this video we are going to look at the best and worst of SmackDown, which will include, an incredible match for Roman Reigns teased, big mistake made in main event storyline, and more, we are also going to look at the fiend Bray Wyatt's whereabouts and Alexa Bliss sends a message to her ex-partner that was recently fired. Don't forget to drop a like, and if you are new be sure to subscribe for daily wrestling content. SmackDown has been a great show for many weeks now, but this week was a mixed bag, there wasn't any storyline that made SmackDown unwatchable, but it wasn't without its faults, either way, the consistency and pacing of the show were on point, and it had a great start and a terrific ending, here are the best and worst aspects of the show. Number 3, Best, Roman Reigns, Jimmy and Jay, and the Mysterios on SmackDown, Roman Reigns opened SmackDown as usual and tried to get his cousins, Jimmy and Jay, to acknowledge him, Jay had no trouble doing that, but Jimmy said he already acknowledged him while being choked out at hell in a cell 2020. The continuity in the storyline is amazing, Roman Reigns demanded that his cousins bring the SmackDown tag team titles to him, stating that the whole family is watching, naturally, he was furious when Jimmy was pinned by Dominic Mysterio, however, a replay showed that Jimmy had lifted his shoulders before the three count, taking away the legitimacy from the result. Eventually, a rematch was booked for the main event, which ended in a disqualification after Roman Reigns attacked Dominic Mysterio, Reigns brutalized the young superstar with Jimmy telling him that it was enough, the emotions and tension made it a great moment, and it achieved a few things at once. It confirmed Jimmy's resistance in pledging his allegiance to Roman Reigns while also teasing a big match for the Universal Champion against Dominic Mysterio, that match however, should only happen a few years from now. Number 3, Worst, No Progression in the Main Event Storyline on SmackDown, it was surprising to see no movement in the main event storyline on SmackDown. While Roman Reigns was busy with his cousins and the SmackDown tag team titles, Seth Rollins had an interview that lasted a few seconds, Cesaro was nowhere to be seen this week, it's odd that with only two episodes of SmackDown left until Hell in a Cell, there's no attention on Roman Reigns' supposed feud with Cesaro, moreover, the plan seems unclear. Is Seth Rollins going to weasel his way into the Universal title match at Hell in a Cell, or is he only after destroying Cesaro nonetheless, Cesaro should have been on SmackDown, if he is headlining Hell in a Cell 2021, it doesn't make sense for him to be off. Number 2, Best, The Rise of Apollo Crews on SmackDown, Apollo Crews is having the best run of his career on SmackDown right now. While his run on Raw from April to September 2020 was impressive, he eventually fell off the radar once he lost the state's championship to Bobby Lashley, his move to SmackDown in October was criticized, but has turned out to be for the best, a heel turn led to an Intercontinental Championship win, and he has now defeated the likes of Big E, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn. This week, Commander Aziz was barred from the ringside for the Intercontinental Championship match between Apollo Crews and Kevin Owens, but that didn't stop the 6-foot 9-inch giant from attacking the Owens backstage before the match. It paid dividends as Apollo Crews eventually retained the Intercontinental Championship against Kevin Owens, after which Sami Zayn attacked his old rival. Apollo Crews' rise on SmackDown has been fascinating to watch, and we're curious to see where he eventually goes. Number 2, Worst, Trying to Make Bayley Look Like the Fiend This week on SmackDown, women's champion Bianca Belair officially challenged Bayley to a match at Hell in a Cell, she was met with Bayley on the screen, laughing maniacally as her face duplicated all over the Thunderdome. It was similar to The Fiend and Alexa Bliss, and it wasn't a good idea since Bayley is nothing like that, it was a weird segment on SmackDown that did nothing for their eventual title match at Hell in a Cell 2021, Carmella, on the other hand, seems to making progress as she defeated Liv Morgan on SmackDown. Number 1, Best, A Non-Title Tag Team Feud, Chad Gable approached former Raw and SmackDown Tag Team Champions The Street Profits, offering to mentor them after their recent downward skid, they refused, and Otis didn't take well to it. He launched an attack on the former champions, starting a non-title feud. It's good to see WWE utilize a tag team without a title feud. Number 1, Worst, The Story of Two Kings on SmackDown Nakamura has been feuding with King Corbin on SmackDown for weeks now, while Corbin got the initial set of wins, Nakamura still managed to acquire the crown that Corbin won nearly two years ago, the story was fun at first, but has fizzled out now, perhaps the only cool thing about the feud is the guitar introduction by Rick Boogs for Nakamura. We're sure the voice of SmackDown, Pat McAfee, would agree, either way, King Corbin got another victory this week, and went to reclaim the crown that belongs to him. Rick Boogs however, tripped him at ringside and held him down, 
allowing Nakamura to give a knockout kick to the head and take the crown back. The story appears childish and fans are quickly going to get bored to see both King Corbin and Nakamura on SmackDown, it seems like a lose-lose situation. Alexa Bliss recently sent a tweet to her former partner Murphy, who was let go by WWE, Murphy's WWE run came to an end two days ago and he was released by the company along with several other top talents, Bliss was once engaged to be married to Murphy, but things didn't work out between the two, they eventually split in 2018, but remained close friends. Alexa Bliss has now posted a response to Murphy's latest tweet in which he shared his email address for booking inquiries, Bliss praised Murphy and called him super talented. Alexa Bliss had a brief alliance with Murphy and Wesley Blake back when she was a mainstay on WWE NXT. Bliss was called up to the main roster during the 2016 WWE draft. It has been about five years since Bliss came up to the main roster and has already carved a Hall of Fame career for herself. Murphy did well for himself on the main roster and is a former Raw Tag Team Champion and a Cruiserweight Champion. He seemed to be gaining momentum upon joining Seth Rollins' faction in early 2020. Murphy eventually turned on Rollins during their angle with the Mysterio family, and the rivalry came to an end with Murphy scoring a huge win over Rollins. The former cruiserweight champion had also gotten into a romantic angle with Alia Mysterio around this time, but the storyline was later dropped. Alexa Bliss even put up a tweet supporting Murphy's on-screen romance with Aaliyah back then, but she received major flack from the WWE Universe. Murphy didn't do much of note during his final months in WWE, however, he possesses incredible in-ring skills and would be a great acquisition for any promotion that manages to sign him. Bray Wyatt took on Randy Orton at WrestleMania 37 in a puzzling and underwhelming contest where he came up short, this was thanks to a distraction from Alexa Bliss, who was portrayed as his ally until then. Many wondered how the Bray Wyatt vs Alexa Bliss storyline would progress, unfortunately. Wyatt has been missing from WWE Raw ever since. This has led many fans to wonder where the resident scary man of WWE is. It should be noted that even though he's been missing from WWE television, Bray Wyatt put up a tweet last month, while it was an allusion to the zombies that appeared during the Lumberjack match between The Miz and Damian Priest, Bray Wyatt did ask the WWE Universe if they missed him. Is this a hint that he could be coming back to action? There is no official word on why Bray Wyatt has been away for so long, but it may just be a question of waiting until fans are back in the arena, creative may also have nothing to do with him, and they may be waiting for a way for the Fiend character to evolve and transform into its next avatar, as it has done previously. In an exclusive for Sportskeeda Wrestling, former WWE writer Vince Russo pointed out that he may be dealing with some health issues, but obviously, because of the sensitive nature of the same, he did not delve into it further. If that is indeed the case, we wish Bray Wyatt all the best and hope that he'll be back in action once again very soon. Alexa Bliss is still playing her supernatural persona on Raw, and there's certainly a storyline to be explored there, in fact, with a slew of releases from the company, Bray Wyatt's return is absolutely necessary. Whether he comes back as the Fiend or in one of the many other personas he's donned over the years, Bray Wyatt's return is imminent. There is no timeline yet, but when it comes to Wyatt, expect the unexpected.